Hi friends, welcome to the course Entrepreneurship. We are in week 3 in the series of special lectures. In this lecture, we will focus on the performance of startups in COVID-19. As we are all aware, COVID-19 has been game-changing discontinuity for the entire world. It was for the first time that the countries imposed economic lockdown across the board. It was also the first time when social mobility was curbed very significantly. Except for people in essential services, no one moved out. And this continued for a long time and the global economy sustained a major contraction in the first quarter of fiscal 2021. However, the central banks responded to this risk by injecting huge amounts of liquidity across the nations. It also has helped in terms of revival of the industrial growth and certain social safety activities. There were two things that happened simultaneously. One was a very seamless transition from working at office to working from home. The second was moving physical education from on-campus education to digital education. These demonstrated the importance of having a strong industrial and infrastructural network that could support these kinds of digital activities as a fallback if physical activities were not to take place. But what did startups do in COVID-19? Did they suffer or did they do well? Did new types of startups emerge or the old types of startups started trying to do something differently? So we will examine these questions and other issues in this lecture. Despite the uncertainty and the volatile market, the COVID-19 pandemic brought about a surge in startups. The existing startups had rapid growth while more startups came into being to meet the special requirements of the emerging COVID era. Not only that, there was greater emphasis on using technology for work, fitness, learning. Shopping became different. Instead of people going to malls, shops, restaurants, the respective requirements were being brought to their homes by the delivery companies. Therefore, e-commerce and food delivery registered a huge growth. As people started working from home, Activity on Zoom increased substantially from 10 million to 300 million as of 2022. This represents 2,900% increase from base level of 2019. Because of the availability of huge amount of liquidity, for companies which believed in investing started favoring the startups. In 2021, 5.4 million new business applications were filed and it surpassed the record of 4.4 million that existed in 2020 with reference to the United States. It is also important to note that three of the top 10 biggest tech IPOs happened in 2020. But it was also in contrast to many companies that filed for bankruptcy protection. Not only that, in countries such as India, informal employment took a beating. Many companies in the informal sector had to drastically prune their operations or close down the shutters. In this situation, startups came up with different paradigms, came up with new business ideas, and they were instrumental in connecting the, the somewhat disconnected social and industrial infrastructure. In the field of education, there was a clear need for new solutions to support online learners and investments flowed to support early stage startups. As we are all aware, startups are known for their agility, flexibility and dynamism. So given the kind of crisis situation that was brought about by the COVID-19, it was to the credit of startups, they continued to maintain their inherent innate characteristics, but also improvised on them further to meet the challenges that occurred. There were several startups, of course, which were deeply impacted by the pandemic because the overall the sectors themselves got deeply impacted. Travel and tourism, beauty and fashion, automotive, agri-tech and new food, artificial intelligence and big data, social media and messaging, gaming, blockchain and crypto were impacted by the pandemic to the extent of 
40% to 70% in the negative. But that doesn't mean that there were no new startups that were coming up. So I take the example of five successful Indian startups which got established during the pandemic. Chen Junction was a startup which was founded in August 2020 with the sole purpose of enabling consumers order homemade meals and it provided a platform for home chefs to make a living. Great Easy was a startup that was established in June 2020, almost after the lockdown started, to enable education institutions to conduct online examinations at a very, very nominal fee of Rs. 1 per exam. Cuscot started in June 2020 and started selling merchandise like t-shirts, caps and hoodies to corporates and institutions, especially those located in small towns. Felicity was a company that was based in Jaipur and it helped people access mental health therapy through online video counseling at an affordable cost. We should recall that the ferocity with which COVID-19 spread and the kind of restrictions that were imposed with equal uh, enormity has resulted in a kind of mental crisis for several people who had delicate mental systems. So this startup tried to provide succor to those kinds of people. Shop, the actual name is uh, Deep's Shop is an e-commerce platform which got established in August 2020. The Jaipur-based digital marketer claims to be the one which is making profit already, having slow but steady rate of 500 orders per month. There are also five uh, public safety startups that got established during the pandemic. In Nigeria, this, a startup called Aron provided eco-friendly delivery solutions using autonomous drones. This startup offered aerial logistics services for clinics, hospitals, laboratories and other medical distribution centers. When physical transportation became rather constrained, supply through drones became important and vital for keeping the healthcare system moving. A startup in Norway called Epigod developed and manufactured medical equipment for the safe transport of contagious patients. Epishetal is a medical isolation and transportation system which was intended for use in both high-risk scenarios and in everyday practice and it helped uh, the hospitals as well as homes deal with resistant diseases or other contagious viruses that require maximum attention and maximum quarantine. Health Code is an Estonian startup. It provided physicians with support in detail detailed daily patient management by using artificial intelligent diagnostic platform to pre-evaluate the patients. An Indian company called Epimetrics offered an analytics-based system that detects impending epidemic outbreaks in real time. Obviously, some of these are not merely for COVID-19. They have got long-term sustainable solution provision capability. Chinese startup Viva Robot provided an autonomous pavement cleaning robot. It follows a preset route. Automatically, efficiently and accurately, it sprays, disinfects and cleans the targeted space. So, you can see that COVID-19 related specific startups also came up globally during this period. <coughs> While several sectors experienced a downward curve in revenues and profits, there have been six segments that saw major growth during the pandemic. One was social connectivity, both for individual connections as well as for office connections. Zoom, which was a pioneer in this segment, saw its total revenue of more than $4 billion, registering a growth of 50% year on year. There were several other companies which got into the enterprise meeting platforms. Cisco was a leader with its WebEx already. Microsoft Teams has fine-tuned its Teams platform, whereas Google came up with its Meet platform. Similarly, when the movie theaters were shut, multiplex were shut, people had no option other than go to OTT to have their favorite shows streamed. So online streaming services such as Netflix, Disney, Amazon Primes registered major growth during the pandemic. Just as a measure, Netflix added over 25 million subscribers in the first half of 2020. Similar was the number from Disney Plus Hotstar. 
30% growth of the subscriber base was achieved. Another important activity that uh, increased substantially was the online gaming industry. It witnessed a boom in 2020 and after that there has been only an upright for the sector. Investment in the gaming sector also increased substantially, 108% to $443 million in calendar year 2021. And that was significantly higher than the 213 million that was there in calendar year 2020. So about 100% increase has taken place in, in, in the investment in the online gaming industry. There have been three other segments that saw major growth. One, the Indian e-commerce market, including the food delivery market, registered significant growth as shown in these two data parts. The e-commerce sale is expected to grow by 20% to 30% as we go forward. Similarly, companies such as Urban Company dealing with the aggregation of home services uh, and also food delivery startups such as Zomato, Swiggy and grocery startups such as Big Basket gained maximum growth during the pandemic. The best monthly sales was ever achieved by Zomato in December 2020. As a result, it could happily go to public in July 2021 with an IPO that was worth over 90 billion Indian rupees. There were several startups in the online education which received considerable traction. Unacademy and Vedantu in EdTech achieved a valuation of over $1 billion. In the fintech space, RazorPay Pine Labs and in the stock broking areas, Zero the achieved significant growth. A SaaS, that is software as a service, emerged during the pandemic as one important pillar of growth. And within the overall startup ecosystem, Baiju's, Paytm, Swiggy, and Oyo made it to Decacon status. There have been specific innovations to fight COVID. Government also has chipped in to encourage startups which will focus on COVID-19. The Startup India program activated an open innovation challenge to target innovations from startups, MSMEs, corporations and individual innovators across multiple challenge areas such as personal protective and critical care equipment, large area and sanitization, crowd tracking, logistics and face use detection. Before COVID-19 came in, Practically, there was very little manufacture of personal protective equipment in the country. As our Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji would say, after COVID-19, the industry reconfigured itself so fast and the startups and MSMEs rose to the challenge so well that India has become one of the largest producers of PPE in the world and began exporting those products as well. Similarly, the smaller companies have shown greater agility and greater dynamism in meeting the requirements for new age of sanitization. The new sanitizer products as well as the face masks were brought in by the MSMEs and the startups rather than the established companies. Companies which were established in the apparel field, for example, took more than six months to come up with their versions of masks, whereas startups were very quick to develop masks. So this is an important uh, pointer to the dynamism that startups can bring to an economy or an industrial network. The accelerating growth of New India's innovations at NEE has been one of the nine missions of the Prime Minister's Science and Technology and Innovation Advisory Council. This council is tasked helping in the commercialization of innovative technologies and it has been engaged in building a portfolio of technologies that can support the fight against COVID-19. Similarly, there was another financial investment or initiative as we may think about it. The ACT grant initiative was a 100 crore rupee grant fund that was set up by venture capital and startup founder community in India and that has become one of the channels for stimulating startup innovations to fight COVID-19. Debt financing also got a leg up through the Small Industries Development Bank of India. Invest India partnered with SIDBI to be able to fast track applications to the various such as SAFE, SAFE Plus and SMILE. These were the schemes specially set up 
to help small and micro enterprises as well as medium enterprises have investment financing and emergency working capital requirements during the tough times of COVID-19. These are some of the innovations that happened during the COVID-19 pandemic and these were all through the startup route. Think CR, Thinker Technologies in a way to spell is a Pune based startup in collaboration with Technology Development Board of the Department of Science and Technology. It developed a special kind of cost effective 3D printed mask that is coated with antiviral agents known as virucides. Because even though the mask was there, mask efficacy to completely filter out the viruses was always in doubt to some extent. Coating the mass with antiviral agents provided additional uh, protection. Thinker is uh, a company which has been focused on patenting of its technologies and the commercial production was started and soon after it provided thousands of such masks to government hospitals in Maharashtra and Bangalore to be used by healthcare workers. This is one example. Another example is that of Pathshow Healthcare. It was a startup incubated at the Society for Innovation and Development at the Indian Institute of Science IASC. It developed a semi-quantitative electrochemical ELISA test for COVID-19 IgM and IgG antibodies. As you may be aware, at the beginning of the pandemic, it used to take almost three days to get a confirmed report through the RT-PCR route and the country needed faster diagnosis and something which is more reliable than rapid antigen tests. So Pathshow pioneered this movement and it has protected its technology through US and Indian patent applications. So it is a major departure from the qualitative rapid antibody tests in the market which were primarily based on the lateral flow ELISA technique. Another innovation related to a startup in Kerala which developed an electronic air sterilization device, Wolf Air Mask it was called. It sterilizes air real time and reduces 99% of the coronavirus present indoors within minutes. This was a very unique uh, innovation I would say and this unique air sterilization capability was proved in a joint test done with the Indian Council of Medical Research ICMR. The company's products are of two varieties, one that functions within 500 square feet area and another which functions in the 1000 square feet area. Within a month of launching Wolf Air Baskets developer All About Innovations received international orders for 20,000 pieces of this pioneering device. Phone per loan is another NBFC or fintech that has been of great support to the COVID-19 affected indigenous people. As we are aware, civil score is essential for getting good credit from the fintech companies. But when COVID-19 hit many businesses, the NBFCs were in distress too. Lending to blue collar workers stopped. Ashwin Bambri, the founder of Phone Per Loan, did not give up that easily. He saw that the fear of hospitalization was too intense to be ignored. He spoke to many insurance companies and this health insurance was launched with the premium paid in easy EMI installments. You can see that startups around the world had posted divergent numbers. Countries such as US, Turkey, Chile, UK, China posed growth rates whereas countries such as Hungary, Germany, Spain, Romania, Portugal and Russia posted negative growth rates. India registered actually a higher growth in applications during the pandemic period. The healthcare technology in particular led the way in the pandemic. There have been 7,128 health tech startups in India that are leveraging cutting edge technologies to help the government fight the pandemic. Bangalore-based startup Bayani has developed a genetic test using predictive analysis tools to check every individual's immunity against the virus. The logic is if you know whether you are having a robust inbuilt immunity, you will be able to fight or ward off the virus. Whereas if the individual has lower immunity, 
the individual must take additional precautions including timely vaccination to be able to fight against the virus. So this was one aspect of ensuring public safety and patient care. Patient care also came to the forefront in terms of many significant directly supportive startup solutions. Artificial intelligence, biomedical engineering, 3D printing, nanotechnology and robotics have helped startups to come up with machine learning solutions so that the spread of COVID-19 could be accurately predicted and the waves themselves were modeled and provided as healthcare inputs to the systems of the government of India and various other countries. Action COVID-19 team is a collaborative effort led by leading entrepreneurs and venture capitalists and this team was supported by state governments and other stakeholders so that several homegrown health tech startups could be established to combat the pandemic. So ethereal machines, max ventilators, Molbio and Karkana.io are four companies which have done interesting work in this area. Ethereal machines and max ventilators were backed by the Telangana government to manufacture and deploy portable ventilators to the army and COVID wards. In fact, ventilator is one area which demanded strong attention by companies because in India we don't have even in the ICUs one-to-one -one correspondence between the bed and the ventilator in most hospitals. The leading corporate chains may have that kind of uh, ratio but many other hospitals don't have and COVID was a disease which was impacting the lungs very much in its first uh, wave and it required uh, hundreds and thousands of ventilators to be manufactured at short notice. The startup uh, people along with the established companies collaborated to develop those kinds of ventilators and provide crucial life support. The healthcare startup Molbio developed portable and battery operated RT-PCR machine to scale up India's testing capability. Whereas Harkana.io deployed 3D printing, injection molding, machining, fabrication and design facility to produce personal protective equipment. There was also an importance accorded to mobility startups during the pandemic because social movement was curbed, social distance was required, with schools shut down, with uh, offices uh, moving to work from home paradigm, there was no need for transportation at all. But at the same time, everybody also needed transportation. So startups were established to be able to provide COVID-19 resilient mobility as a service. It was developed as a decentralized open source mobility marketplace in partnership with Factual which is a boutique consultancy that specializes in mobility. Therefore, there was several networking initiatives and infrastructure backbone building related to all kinds of mobility service providers, be it the public transport, taxis or other uh, ways of ensuring mobility, not only in one particular city, but across multiple cities and regions within continental Europe. Zipline again is an US-based medical drone delivery company. As of April 2022, its drones have made over 20 million miles of flights across 275,000 commercial deliveries, not small numbers at all. The company's drones deliver whole blood platelets, frozen plasma, and cryoprecipitative products along with medical products. And these included vaccines, infusions, and common but essential medical commodities that were very much necessary during the COVID-19 healthcare requirements. And of course, EdTech startups, we discussed in the earlier lecture as well. Byju's was the pioneer as well as the leader in terms of the online education system. In a very short frame of time, schools and colleges reoriented from traditional teaching methodology to dynamic digital classrooms. EdTech startups in India raised USD 4.7 billion to emerge as the third most funded sector in 2021. And classrooms became more effective as the schools and colleges were getting opened. And AR and VR started becoming important in the online education sector as well as the physical education sector. 
as I mentioned in the previous lecture, the contribution of NPTEL to online coaching cannot be understated or underestimated. With the world's largest repository of online courses developed by professors from IIT Madras and University of Science, NPTEL Swayam platform was of a repository covering every field of engineering, every field of science and also including very traditional subjects. So the kind of boutique of uh, online education products that are available in NPTEL are probably not, not matched by any of the other educational online systems. So that is something which we need to be proud of. The role of e-commerce startups during the pandemic was probably one of the best known uh, and best experienced aspects of the COVID era. Amazon India itself saw revenue getting boosted by about 40%. The revenue went up to 7,555 crores. Flipkart also received a huge leg up in its annual revenue and that represented a 12% increase. Big Basket, which delivered groceries across the cities, had registered a revenue growth of 36%. Many other commerce sites such as Paytm, Snapdeal reported increases in revenue in 2020 and 2021 from the pre-pandemic eras. As I mentioned earlier, SaaS or software as a service became an important aspect to take this movement of work from home forward. And to the extent that hybrid would continue to be a given thing in future, that is part physical and part work from home systems working together, SaaS as a service will be very important. And this is a huge billion dollar opportunity, multi-billion dollar opportunity for companies. Flock is an office team communication software that was founded by Indian serial entrepreneur Bhavin Thurakya. It registered a revenue growth of 40%. Facilio was a Chennai based Internet of Things IoT SaaS startup for property management. It clocked much business during the four months after the COVID-19 breakup, which exceeded the previous 12 months uh, requirement. So a survey was conducted by the leading consultancy company, McKinsey & Company. And the results are as follows. 90% of the executives surveyed believe that the COVID-19 crisis would fundamentally change the way they do businesses over the next five years. 85% of the people surveyed are concerned that the COVID-19 crisis will have a lasting impact on the customer needs and wants over the next five years. That is, discretionary items would reduce in the demand and essential items like consumer staples would go up in demand. 21% have the expertise, resources and commitment to pursue new growth successfully. That is, although there is such a tectonic shift in the way the business will be conducted and in the way the demand patterns would shift, only 21% have the expertise, resources and commitment to pursue new growth opportunities successfully. Two-thirds of the people surveyed believe that this would be the most challenging moment in their executive career. And to be frank, most companies have tried to rejig themselves, restructure themselves, undergo transformations to be able to meet the new paradigm of work. As we have seen, the startups have been leading lights in this area. And of course, today the world is opening up at different uh, levels of opening up. And this has led to a plunge in uh, the old ways of doing business. But we do not know how long this kind of uh, revenge buying or revenge travel would uh, stay as a new trend. And oh, eventually there would be a kind of settlement around the hybrid model of demand as well as hybrid model of supply. When you look at the global situation, during the pandemic period, the startups performed rather well. In 2021, in the United Kingdom alone, on an average, 50,000 startup businesses were established every month. 
there were more online and mail order retail businesses that were created than in any other sector 35,608 in 2020 compared to 36,15 in 2019. The buying and selling of real estate was the third most popular source of new businesses created growing by 40% compared to 2019. The number of takeaway food shops created increased by 33% in 2020 compared with 2019. Also, stock investments by people who were named to stock markets received a significant boost. The number of DMAT accounts opened and the number of stock transactions conducted by these new entrants to the stock markets were phenomenal and were a matter of support for the stock market appreciation during the COVID period. Now, when you look at the startup ecosystem, the trend was also one of a little more democratization of the startup ecosystem. Generally, there has always been a significant investor interest towards innovators who came from elite educational institutions, such as the IITs and IIMs. But during the pandemic, a trend of startup promoters coming from different educational institutions across the country also came up and this signifies the maturing of the startup ecosystem. In 2015, for example, 70% of the top funded startups were from graduates either from IIT or IIM. However, in 2020, this percentage came down to 44%. Among the top 20 startups who raised early stage investment each year, the proportion of founders belonging to institutions apart from IIT and IIM has been on the rise. Even though the bias still exists, during the current pandemic, entrepreneurs from various backgrounds are now able to access investors. Investors can find founders not only from the metro cities but also from remote areas owing to the pandemic. And with things going online, many deals are sealed via video conferencing and the, if you may say, the glitter and glitz of uh, special events to attract startup interest or to attract the founder interest are no longer necessary. It is quite possible to make a video conferencing call to a potential investor, put across the value proposition and seek funding. The critical trends are as follows. Technological adoption, diversity in talent and regional supply chain. Cloud computing, for example, has become critical because it supports everything from virtual learning to telemedicine to food delivery. Most successful startups during the pandemic have been the ones which had very strong digital backbone as their DNA. The second critical trend is one of diversity in talent. This pandemic has replaced the notion that physical meeting, physical presence and physical office is required to deliver the best of work. Informal setups, networks, cloud-based meeting platforms have taken collaboration to a new level. Many more have begun participating in the meetings and communication got spread in a much more democratized way. Of course, many companies which are required to produce products in the factories and provide services in the field had to have physical activities. But a whole amount of computer-based work or analytical work, discussing work has moved seamlessly to work at home or work from home situation. The third critical factor was regional supply chain. With countries wanting to become more self-dependent, every country recognized that it had to have its own robust supply chain infrastructure. And that became sharper as China was considered to be a country which was difficult to manage in the pandemic career, given it wasn't really telling the rest of the world about the origins of the pandemic virus and there were charges traded both ways as to who is responsible to what extent in the spread of COVID pandemic. However, many countries, particularly the developed countries, began realizing that their total dependence on China 
for production and supply of parts has been uh, very detrimental to this supply chain stability. So Ch China plus one has come about as a policy option for several of such developed countries and India recognized that as one of the factors that could boost Make in India programs. So as a result of the pandemic, the VC industry also became more circumspect, more reflective. While on one hand, there was much greater availability of funding because of the injection of liquidity by central banks, there was also a concern that was emerging, which finally got its roots in 2022, that the business models are as important as the ideas are, as important as the market presence and market share. So in that paradigm, the VCs are gaining some negotiating power because the investment pool is smaller relative to the number of companies that are coming out with their products and services and the investment needs. Secondly, there is also a higher risk aversion which is developing and the nuances change from investor to investor. Travel restrictions have caused cross-border venture capital investments to decline, whereas the venture capital firms which are represented in countries could provide the requisite capital somewhat effortlessly. There is still interest in alternative assets within the digital ecosystem and bases have been making the most of adoption curves related to the movement from offline to digital models across the industries. So how do we adapt to the new normal? Again here startup founders have shown the way to adapt themselves to the new normal. Earlier it used to take 12 months to have the cash come in through the runway. Today the runway ranges are extended to 18 to 22 months. Overall, in the post-pandemic era, capital efficiency is more important than unbridled growth. In the last lecture, I have talked about the advisory that has been received from a leading venture capital company as to how the founders should rejig their business models towards robustness and profitability. Similarly, in terms of compensation, stock options have become more important than regular salaries given the global pressure on finances. Startups are betting on pivoting their business models while modifying their product and business roadmaps. And there is a cautious approach because some of the more daring and strategic decisions are getting postponed. Finally, investors have displayed changing priorities with an increased focus on profitability, break-in period, unit economics, control on burn rate, etc. In this context, I want to also talk to you about COVID vaccines because COVID vaccines are developed by established companies, no doubt, but development of the vaccines itself is a startup activity. So how companies uh, develop the COVID vaccines in record times and how different startups or different startup activities in different established companies pursue different paths to have one goal of creating a vaccine for COVID-19 virus in the earliest possible time frame. Normally, it would take 10 years for a vaccine to be developed. In this case, almost in parallel, several innovators and startups developed a vaccine for COVID in just 10 months, ably supported by the government agencies and governmental systems and procedures. And the COVID vaccine could be developed from two different areas. From, it could be through an attenuated weakened version of a common cold virus known as adenovirus, which could prompt the immune system to start making antibodies and prime it to attack the coronavirus infection. It could also be from the dead virus, which is incapable of infecting people, but is still able to instruct the immune system and which will have that additional impact with immune adjuvants. Then there is a third technology that came in during this period. It was called mRNA technology. It involved mRNA, the molecules in cells that control protein production to teach the immune system to make coronavirus fighting antibodies. BioNTech story is a story of an innovative startup which had technology and conviction. In 2019, it made its stock market debut and 
the German biotechnology company was valued just under 3.4 billion dollars. After its enormous success in development of mRNA-based vaccine, the company is now worth 40 billion dollars as of May 2022. And the company's COVID vaccine has been in the forefront of the global fight in the vaccine. The company had some relationship with Pfizer earlier and Pfizer was very proactive and very trusting in teaming up with the BioNTech to develop the mRNA COVID-19 vaccine in less than a year. Here we can see the founders whose names are Ugar Sahin 55 and Oslem Chirin 53, the husband and wife team behind BioNTech. Both are scientists. In 2001, the pair founded Ganymed Pharmaceuticals, which is a spin-off from the University of Mainz in Germany and the University of Zurich in Switzerland. And they focused on developing a new class of cancer drugs called ideal monoclonal antibodies. In 2008, they founded BioNTech along with the Austrian cancer expert Christoph Huber. BioNTech focused on mRNA technology of developing vaccines. And that technology, as I said, involves molecules in cells that control protein production to teach the immune system to make coronavirus fighting antibodies. Utilizing its relationship with the Pfizer since 2018, because the strength, resources and the capabilities of a big pharmaceutical company are necessary to make the scale up and also make it available to as many countries and as to as many people as possible the alliance was established with, with Pfizer. Pfizer agreed to pay the German company $425 million to develop the vaccines and very interestingly Pfizer did not sign an agreement until the vaccine was actually developed not because it lacked trust in BioNTech because it had more trust than ever in BioNTech. They felt, both the companies felt that it was important to develop the vaccine rather than get caught in the nitty-gritty of negotiating an agreement. So it is a kind of uh, courage, foresight, forethought and above all trust in each other's technical and uh, leadership capabilities to be able to get that paradigm to develop a startup vaccine. Covaxin is another story which makes Indians proud because it is a vaccine developed wholly indigenously in India through a combination of ICMR, Indian Council of Medical Research National Institute of Virology Pune and biotechnology company Bharat Biotech. These institutions collaborated to develop Covaxin and Covaxin is an indigenous vaccine which is based on whole viron inactivated vero cell derived platform technology. These inactivated vaccines do not replicate and therefore are unlikely to revert and cause pathological effects. As I said, this is one of the three systems available. This system is one of dead virus, incapable of infecting people, but capable of instructing the immune system to mount a defensive reaction against an infection. It is also combined with immune potentiators, such as the vaccine adjuvants, which are added to the vaccine to increase and boost its immunogenicity. It is well established and time tested platform. And it is also a platform which produces vaccines to conditions that are suitable in a country such as India. So it is available in a ready to use liquid presentation in multi-dose vials and stable at 2 to 8, 8 degrees the normal refrigeration temperature. Whereas Pfizer BioNTech uh, vaccine required an unusually low grade refrigeration temperature of minus 75 degrees centigrade. So Covaxin is a product that was suitable for India. We are talking about Covishield here. Covishield came through the Oxford vaccine story. University of Oxford had the Jenner Institute, which was pioneering the development of vaccines for several decades. And it is a very instructive multinational collaboration with AstraZeneca assuming the manufacturing as well as marketing responsibility for the vaccines. Serum Institute of India, the world's largest single manufacturer of vaccines, undertaking the manufacturing responsibility and the basic innovation being provided by the University of Oxford. And Covishield in India 
got developed when the weakened version of the common cold virus known as the adenovirus from the chimpanzees was modified by Jenner Institute to look like coronavirus and used in the development of the COVID shield. And when this vaccine is injected into a patient, it prompts the immune system to start making antibodies and primes it to attack any coronavirus infection. So this is the one development where Oxford researchers did a lot of work on developing this vaccine, which again is stable at 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. And because the developers of the vaccine as well as the manufacturers were committed to making these vaccines in as many countries as possible, multi-country clinical trials were also conducted to make this vaccine approved by several regimes, including by the World Health Organization. So how the Oxford vaccine works is given here. But one of the important aspects which we need to think about is that when science is combined with observational practice, the era of structured vaccination dawned around the 1800s. And the startups at that time grew into eminent research institutions and scientific foundations. And they are today providing the pillars of protection against these kinds of viruses and bacteria. So the startups which we see today coming into various medical technology and healthcare areas are the ones which are going to grow with the right kind of uh, models, with the right kind of technologies and with the right kind of financial support to provide support to the governments, to the societies in handling any future epidemics that could suddenly surprise the society. So the way the Oxford vaccine works has been illustrated here. Now I want to end this uh, lecture with a reference to Consumex, an IIT Metro's research park incubated startup. And the startups are based on business opportunities we went through in the main course and also briefly touched upon in the special lectures. But whenever things like COVID happen, startups can find a new responsibility. Consumex was a manufacturer of a very novel digital analog watch that is an analog watch which has the style of a typical smart looking analog dial but also has the capability of a digital watch. It could be connected with the mobile phone and provide huge amount of digital functionality to track one's health and one's vitals. So that was the product, the Muse watch the company had unveiled in 2019. But when uh, COVID-19 uh, came, they developed in record time a tracker called MuseQ in 2020. MuseQ not only measures body vitals, but also detects unusual changes such as COVID cough. Spurred by artificial intelligence, it had an algorithm which could differentiate COVID cough from other types of cough and then provide a signal to the doctors as well as to the patients that probably they are likely to have COVID infection taking root in their bodies. Now this startup offered Q initially as an individual health companion for individuals to proactively track both COVID and non-COVID parameters, for example, heart rate, number of steps, then the SpO2, that is oxygen saturation, which is the most important thing for finding out about the COVID uh, taking uh, strength in the body. However, the startup took this paradigm further. It started deploying this product as a medical device in real world hospital settings, particularly in Chengalpattu in Hyderabad. And through its deployment and very clever networking, very creative networking with the hospital management systems, it could identify patients who may require ICU or require step down ICU therapies. And uh, at that point of time, as we are all aware, there was huge pressure on ICU beds and there was only a random allocation of people to ICU beds. Sometimes those who needed ICU beds were not getting the ICU beds, whereas those who did not require ICU beds went into ICU beds because the parameters of COVID-19 signaling from the body were not adequately captured. Muse Q, which looked smart and cute, has filled in this gap and became a very important community clinical management device. 
It is a great example of how technology-based startups could respond to COVID challenges and contribute to the protection of public health. So startups performed exceedingly well in the COVID-19 era with new innovations, new products, new businesses, and new business models. They also rose to the occasion to keep the wheels of society moving through their own delivery applications, through their own e-commerce, mobile commerce applications. They also came up with a new technological innovations such as these. Not only that, the whole spectrum of medium and uh, small enterprises rose to the occasion, manufacturing a whole new range of PPEs, sanitizers, gloves, hospital supplies, clinical supplies, you name it, those companies performed the development and produced them in vast numbers to provide. Mass has been something which the informal sector in the textile industry, the apparel industry came up with and provided a huge succor to the society. So COVID-19 era disrupted the world, but it also resolved new paradigm for the country. It reinforced the belief that human resilience and human innovation, when they are combined, there could be the capability to overcome any adversity that may suddenly arise. And it is very enlightening for us that startups and smaller companies played a very notable role in this uh, resurgence of Indian creativity and also, of course, global creativity. So with this, we will come to the end of the lecture. See you in the next special lecture number four.